Hi everyone, and in this episode of C++ Crash Course, we're going to be going over if statements, else statements, and switch statements. So this will be kind of the first introduction to flow control. So we'll go ahead and open up our example, which will be this CF, so control flow, if else switch.cpp. Now, this program shows control flow using if else and switch statements. So we're gonna see three examples. The first one will be this new line of code that we haven't seen before, which is this if block. Now, what is an if statement? An if statement is just a way of you know, deciding, normally up until this point, we've seen you know, a straight line of execution. So every single line of code will be executed. Now, sometimes we don't want that. Sometimes you wanna make decisions based upon you know, maybe a condition. So if something is set or if something is true, we want to do something different than if you know, that condition is false. So in this case, we use something like an if statement. So an if statement written like this if parens and then some condition. If this condition inside of these parens is true, we execute what's in the block. If it's not, we don't. Uh, we just skip past it. We don't even. We don't worry about it. We don't do anything. So in this case, we're just doing a simple test. If a is equal to five, and if it's true, we print out what's inside. And so when we run this at the very end, we should get this print because we're setting uh, in our declaration and our initialization of a, we're setting it to five. Now we can do some more, you know, complicated or fancy stuff with if statements and we can combine them with else statements. Else statements say if the if condition is not true, do what's right here. Now, in this case, if we put an else followed by an if, it's saying if this if condition is not true, test this other if condition. And we can stack these uh, as many as we want. So we can have if, else if, else if, else if, as many as we want. So in this case, we'll just use one, but you should know that it is extensible. You can, you can expand this if you want to. So in this case, we're testing if a is greater than five. So it's not true, so we'll skip that. And so we shouldn't print out this line. Then next, we get to this else if, where we test if b is equal to 10. Now, in our declaration and initialization of b, we set it to 10, so we should print out this line. Now, the thing about these if, else, if, else statements is if, uh, if one condition is true, you do not test any of the other conditions. So in this case, if let's say a was greater than five, we would print out a is greater than five, and then we would go to the end of this block right here. Same thing right here. So we, we would first test in this case, a isn't greater than five, then we test if b is equal to 10, it is equal to 10. So we would print out right here, this line, b is equal to 10. And then we wouldn't go to this else statement. Now, the final thing, if we don't put an if after an else statement right here, like we do on line 22, this is our catch all. So any other case that's possible will print out this line. So if a was say, uh, less than five, and if B was not equal to 10, any of those possible cases of which there are you know, not infinite, but uh, a huge number, as you can imagine, would print out this any other case. Now, sometimes we don't wanna write if statements. Sometimes it's uh, it can look a little bit wordy if we keep having to write if, else if, else if, else if, else if. Uh, Oh, I should also note, you don't need to have an else if statement in here. You could just have a simple if followed by an else statement. Uh, but sometimes we don't want to write all these if and else if, and we can use one other thing that acts exactly like uh, if statements can, and that's a switch statement. Now, switch statements behave in a very similar manner where we take switch on you know, a certain variable or something or an expression, and then these cases are the result of that expression. So this right here is saying, we're going to look at the variable a, and we're going to test here the case that a is equal to four, or the case that a is equal to six, and then we have a default case down here that says 
kind of like the else statement does. Any other case, we will go to this default case. So then what we have are these, we also have these break uh, statements in here. Now, why do we need these break statements? So up here, you know, just implicitly, if one of these statements was true or one of these conditions, we wouldn't execute any of the other comparisons. So in this case, if A was greater than five, we would print this, but we wouldn't compare if B is equal to 10. We just drop straight through and continue after this chain. Now, if we don't have a break statement in a switch and these switch statements, we would continue and do the next comparison. So you can have, uh, you can end up having multiple things be printed out uh, or multiple things be done if you don't include these break statements. Now we don't need to include a break statement after default because it is the last statement in this long list of cases, or in this case, uh, we only have three statements in here, but you could have any number you want, but we don't need a break here because it's already at the end. So there's nothing after it to execute. And then a return zero to exit our main function. So let's go ahead and run this and let's remind ourselves what we should print. So because we set A equal to five, we should print the contents of, uh, or we should print this line inside of the if statement. Now we also set B equal to 10. So we should not print this A is greater than five because A is equal to five in our case. Then this should be true, this B is equal to 10. So we should print this line. And because we print this line, we shouldn't execute this else statement. Now going down to the switch statement, again, A is equal to five. We should fail both of these cases because A is not equal to four and A is not equal to six. So we should execute uh, what's in this default. And we can go ahead and compile this and run this. So we'll use G++. We'll just call this the same name, but without the C++ extension and We'll pass in the C++ file, we'll compile, we'll have that green executable and we'll run it. And let's see what our output is. So our output is inside the if statement. So we're correct there. We get this B is equal to 10. So we did what was within that else if block. And then we, used the we ended up going to the default case of that switch statement, which is exactly kind of what we said. And that's going to wrap it up for this introduction to if, else if, and switch statements. All of this code is located on the Coffee Before Arch uh, GitHub page under the C++ Crash Course repo. So over here in the readme, we have links to all of the other YouTube videos that we've done before, along with the concepts that they cover and direct links to the files. So in this case, it would be this file, we'll click on it, and it will take us to this exact file that we're working with. All right, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and have a nice day.